Uh, another space explorer. Hey, you ever think of joining up with the Vanguard? Help the United Colonies, earn some credits, even get your UC citizenship? Um... Why not? Excellent. Just need to do a little paperwork. An orientation on the UC, a knock out an exam, and a probationary mission. We need to know you'll be able to hack it out there after all. Do well. You'll be out there keeping the peace in no time. Don't forget, John. I need him back after you wrap him in that fancy get-up of yours. No worry, Sarah. I'm not forgetting about you or our little business afterwards. Promise. First things first, head down to the orientation hall and get signed up at the registration terminal. The system will walk you through the rest. Oh, I just thought I could just oh, sign up. you got a bounty? Well, you're gonna have to make things right with the UC before we'll let you join. Oh. But if you've got any questions, I can get you sorted. Oh. That's embarrassing. Um, let me go ahead and do this one real quick. And I will, uh, get back to it. Sorry. If you don't have... Yes? You needed something? The Vanguard exam? Just press the option for the Vanguard orientation hall in the elevator. Oh, okay. Enjoy your time in New Atlantis. Definitely weird. Loading time was fast as hell. Interesting. From their foundation, the United Colonies strove to provide all their citizens with opportunity, security, and peace. But there were those among the UC that still wanted something more. Independence. So in 2161, the UC issued the Centaurus Proclamation granting UC citizens the right to settle distant worlds and form their own sovereign powers. It wasn't long before the first new faction, the Free Star Collective, was formally organized in 2188, later followed by House Maroon, revealing themselves to the universe in 2230. The result of the Centaurus proclamation has always left me torn. So much conflict arose as a result. Was it worth it? I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone should have their own, like, you know, group. But, I mean, these guys were nuts. It was only in 2230 that the faction known as House Varu first made contact with the rest of the settled systems. Founded by the passengers of a colony ship that had left New Atlantis and disappeared four decades earlier, House Varun 
was a faction unlike any other. A theocracy dedicated wholly to the beliefs of its isolationist founder, Janan Varun. House Varun initially made overtures of peace towards the rest of the settled systems. They claimed their only intention was to spread the word of their god, the Great Serpent. But none could have guessed that this worship might take the form of a bloody war, the Serpent's Crusade. Wow, okay. Free Star The Free Star Collective was initially founded in 2188, when the citizens of Aquila banded together with the pleasure city of Neon in mutual defense. But in 2194, after the deployment of a UC Medical Star station in orbit around their world, the citizens of Narion also requested to join the Collective. The resulting rise in tensions between the Free Star Collective and UC culminated in the Settled System's first intergalactic conflict, the Narion War. Despite a decisive victory by the UC, the colonies permitted the citizens of Narion to join the Collective, forming the basis for the fiercely independent union that persists to this day. Serpent's Crusade. Beginning in 2240, House Varun forces declared all-out war on the rest of human civilization, initiating the Serpent's Crusade. Over the next 23 years, thousands of Freestar, UC, and independent souls were killed by agents of House Varun in the name of their Serpent God. It was only with the death of their founder in 2263 and the succession of his heir, Jarek, that House Varun finally sued for peace. There remained, however, select members of House Varun who refused to recognize the cessation of hostilities their leaders established. Even after House Varun's mysterious disappearance, these zealots remain a threat to all who encounter them. Their pacification, the goal of all space. Okay, wow. So they're completely nuts. Of the many conflicts between the galaxy's factions, none was more brutal than the recent colony war between the UC and the Freestar Collective. Set off by the unauthorized Freestar colonization of Vesta's Pride in 2308, a direct violation of the Narion Treaty, the colony war spread quickly across the galaxy. Both sides deployed every tool at their disposal. Armadas of warships, mechanized combat platforms, or mechs. Even bioengineered alien creatures, the infamous UC Xeno weapons. It was only in 2311 at the Battle of Cheyenne that the scales finally tipped. The Free Star Collective, utilizing their civilian fleet as a human shield, successfully crippled the superior United Colonies Navy. After their shocking victory against the galaxy's greatest navy, the Free Star Collective offered terms of peace, which the colonies out of an interest in staving off any further human costs, accepted. The galaxy has been rebuilding ever since. The colony war was a horrible conflict that irreparably wounded the settled systems. There were times I felt that it would never end. Few settled worlds were left untouched by the colony war. But nowhere could the viciousness of modern warfare be seen more clearly than on the Free Star planet of Nera. Initially occupied by invading United Colonies forces as a forward operating position, repeated attempts to take and retake the planet by collective forces led only to devastation. Swaths of the world were transformed into scorched husks, a nightmarish testament to the depths of human ingenuity and human cruelty. An 
and today, Nera remains a continuing reminder to the horrors of unfettered war. This has been a constant conflict. Maybe I was wrong. What the hell is this thing? I really hope this is just a phase. Um... In the midst of the colony war, a different kind of tragedy struck the UC city of Londinian. A newly constructed but critical supply center for the United Colonies war effort, Londinian found itself overrun by one of the galaxy's most mysterious predators, the Terramorph. Aware of a pervasive threat to all human settled worlds, Terramorphs swept over the city, seemingly out of nowhere, on a scale never before seen in recorded history. Valiant efforts by the UC military slowed the onslaught, but the creatures proved unstoppable. Ultimately, the decision was made to destroy the Londinian spaceport, sealing off the city, the outbreak, and its citizenry from the galaxy at large. The tragedy of Londinian is mourned by the UC to this day. Whoa. So, that looks like a- All four of my last science papers have been on Terramorphs. It's a lot of detail. After the devastation brought by the colony war, the UC and the Freestar Collective came together to ratify a treaty that became known as the Armistice. Both sides agreed to a vast reduction in standing forces and that Xeno weapons and mech warfare would be outlawed. All related research was sealed away, accessible only in cases of dire emergency. But the Collective had another demand that the active commanders of the UC military stand trial for their actions. The United Colonies, in the interest of peace and galactic security, agreed. In 2311, three United Colonies senior officers were found guilty. Commander Henry Durant, General Indira Rastogi, and Fleet Admiral Francois Senon, known better as Ve Victus. All were sentenced to death for their actions, bringing the colony war to a close and returning peace to the galaxy at long last. I was a strong supporter of the Armistice. All of the terrible weapons that both sides used against one another. It had to end. There's a lot of detail in this game. They yeah. really did outdid themselves with this. It was into this new world that the Vanguard was born. An official branch of the UC Navy, the Vanguard is the United Colonies Volunteer Fleet, serving a myriad of security, logistical, and reconnaissance roles. And after a sufficient length of service, UC citizenship is guaranteed to every Vanguard member. Open to all captains, regardless of origin, the Vanguard is leading the charge to protect and support the citizens of the United Colonies, wherever in the galaxy they may be. No one is born a United Colony citizen. Only through service to the UC can one hope to earn one citizenship. prides itself on taking care of its people. Cost of living controls mean citizens pay less than their foreign counterparts for needs big and small. All citizens are issued a grant upon joining to get themselves on their feet. And only UC citizens have the opportunity to purchase property, getting the chance to live in one of the most beautiful cities in the settled systems. By joining the Vanguard today, you too can begin earning your place here, in the heart of galactic civilization, as a citizen of the United Colonies. A lot 
of information. So I guess we're going to school with Sam. This is going to be on everything we learned. I've spent a fair bit of time in simulators just like these. They're startlingly realistic. Have fun. Oh, cool. So maybe we'll get some more emphasis on how to fly better. Ah, you must be our new applicant. I'm Proctor Samuelson. The simulator's already been prepped. You can head in whenever you're ready. Any advice? Well, I can't answer that question directly. I will say this. Due to the solitary nature of our work, resourcefulness is a critical tool in any Vanguard pilot's repertoire. You're permitted, even encouraged, to use whatever tool you're able to find in there. Of course, you'll be running through a high-realism combat flight simulation, engineered by members of the UC Science staff, right here in MAST. Your task is to defeat at least three tiers of simulated opponents. Accomplish that, and you pass the exam, and can then proceed on to your probationary mission. However, if you defeat more than three tiers of enemies, your required enlistment time for citizenship will be reduced, and your enlistment bonus increased. But you're welcome to try as many times as you like before returning to Commander Tuwala to proceed on to the next step in your application process. We'll only keep the highest score you manage to achieve in there. All right, then. Okay, let's do it. Before I do that, though, I'm going to save. This is a side mission I probably should have been a little bit more careful about. No. This is the Mark 18 flight simulation chamber applicant, currently in orbit around a high detail recreation of a remote world. When you're ready to begin, please take a seat in the pilot's chair. Your exam is simple. Defeat as many tiers of opponents as you can before your ship is disabled. You must defeat at least three tiers of opponents to pass the exam. Good hunting, applicant. Okay, so let's see if we can actually do a little better than last time. This is a simulation I don't feel as, you know, bad. Wait, what the hell? Oh shit, level 32? Hey. on one for a oh, moment. Let's do this one. Okay. Switch over to you. Come on. There we go. Come on. Damn. It's a lot of them. I'm not sure hitting blocks 
will actually own her. because you're on your own. I think I did pretty well, though. Some motion controls, now I'm good. Uh, there's two more after that. I think I'm good. I think I learned a little bit better about how to do ship combat now. Congratulations, applicant. You've passed. You can head up to Commander Tuwala to receive your final results and your probationary assignment. Or you're cool. welcome to take another run at the simulation if you'd like to try and earn a better score. Nah. You'll only good. keep your best run. Let's roll. That was fun though. I think I got a better understanding of how like the um ship combat works now, because sometimes I'm like I'm trying to follow them if they're moving and I had to slow down and turn. Maybe left or right to be able to actually do it better. If you don't have official business. We ask you remain in the lobby. Well, look who's back. Everything go all right with the exam? Or did you have some questions you needed answered first? Uh, yeah, I wanted to. I did my pilot exam. Ah, so these are your numbers that just came through then. You ready to hear how you did? You got it. Then let's get to them. So, looking at the data. Hit every mural in the orientation hall, huh? A test of preparation and thoroughness. Two traits the Vanguard values highly. Psychological results are all within expected levels. Navy doesn't have room for folks that'll fall apart the first time they're trying to outrun a homing missile. Now, how'd you do against your foes? Tier 4, not too shabby. The techs make us test each level of the Sim too. I can tell you that way were some real artificial bastards. Good job putting them away. Hell of a job. 
I might even let you fly me around sometime. So then, looking at your results as a whole, and presuming you're successful in completing your probationary mission, you could have your UC citizenship after only... Ten years service. Pretty standard for combat assignments. But your performance in the simulator does mean I can offer a signing bonus. Help convince you to join the cause. Ten years might seem like a long time, but it's worth the climb if you wish to become a citizen. So, sounds to me like we've got Vanguard material on our hands. If you're interested, we could bring you on as a provisional member today. Get you the credits you've earned, then send you out on your probationary mission. First, though, all UC service people, provisional or otherwise, are required to swear an oath. So, you want to make this official? Commit yourself to the cause of the colonies? It's a big decision. John, you're not about to have my compatriot here sign some kind of contract that sells you their grandmother five years down the line, are you? Officer's honor, Sarah. This is honest work for honest credits. So, you ready to do the deed? I don't see why not. Well, um, can we use it under the table while to operate independently? I mean, keeping my options open isn't bad. You're not in the Freestar Collective here. Vanguard keeps its work above board. You want in, you have to do the same as everyone else. And that starts with the oath. Okay, sure. Fantastic. Then just follow me. Before I do that, though, I have a skill point. <laughs> and I think I got one in almost every column. I think I need to put one in, you know, combat. There we go. Kind of excited. I want to see what this whole like freestar, not freestar, UNC thing is. Or actually, they're called the Vanguard now, right? I just realized it's actually nighttime now. That's actually cool. Ladies. <laughs> right doing this where we couldn't see the stars now raise your right hand the motto of the vanguard is supra et ultra above and beyond that is where we serve beyond the furthest reaches of the united colonies military and with honor and duty above reproach do you swear to protect and defend the citizens of the united colonies to the best of your abilities and to uphold the values of the vanguard honor Loyalty, self-reliance, in all your actions as a member of the United Colonies Navy? Then let me be the first to officially welcome you to the United Colonies Vanguard. Now, only thing left is getting you that probationary mission. And what I've got is... comms repair. Group trying to refurb an old colony war processing plan on Tau Ceti 2. Sounds like they'd barely gotten set up when their communications died. Place is as isolated as they come. So Brass wants a vanguard to deliver the repair suite and ensure anyone present is safe and secure. So, can the people of Tau Ceti 2 count on you? That's the spirit. Head down to the spaceport and talk to Crew Chief Harath. He'll get you the repair suite plus your new recruit kit. Oh, and your advance. Give it your all out there. Supra et Ultra. Not yes. bad.